I don't want to say spin. It's a, it's a great different perspective on curiosity. I think than we, than we hear and talk about often. Um, it's also, I feel like a lot more difficult to action against. Mm. Right. And here's what I mean. I, I think the, idea of curiosity one that look we talk about all the time on the show um i think it gets oversimplified on ask yeah. questions yeah, you know agreed. have an open mind right agreed. and although that's true that is almost impossible to do right and so then if we're doing it in the context of humans right mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. not just information then you add a whole other level of complexity so where do you recommend, and I know you speak and you coach and all these things, where do you recommend people start yeah. if they're saying, okay, listen, I do want to connect with others. Yep. Mm -hmm. However, and I imagine this is most people, I also have a lot going on in my world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I could be a, a, which I am, right? A, 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 a straight white man with all the blah, blah, blahs, but there's still a lot of crap, you mm -hmm. know? So where do people start in the fact that they want to connect, but also recognize they have their things to deal with? Totally. And I write this uh, about this in the book. I call these speed bumps to, to accessing deep curiosity. Um, you know, you're talking about time, which is a big one. Trauma is another mm -hmm. one. Fear is a really big one. And distance is another one, you know, and, and I talk about, it's almost paradoxical that, or, or it's, it's almost like an, it's a catch 22 that we, we don't, for instance, have enough time to be curious, mm -hmm. but if we are truly curious about, you know, let's say inwardly curious about what matters to us, our emotions, you know, how to better ourselves, how to better communicate to the people we love, that can actually free up so much more of our time, help us to focus our time on people that matter to us, on the things that bring us meaning um, in our lives. And so um, it's a tool of reflection. It's a tool of growth. And so you know, it's, 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 but, you know, we can get and stumble and, and prevent ourselves from even getting to that point of re realizing these things about ourselves because we're like, oh, I don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. um, when it could actually be this thing, this powerful tool that liberates you and brings more time to you. So I'll say that. And also that's why I brought a tool, a framework into my book, Seek, mm -hmm. is because this is really hard and people need that guidance. Like I said, you know, a lot of people feel like, okay, I'm in the weight room and I don't know what to do like I did, you know? Right. So I have this dive motto, D-I-V-E, it's an acronym. And each um, of those letters stands for one of the core muscles that you can exercise to access what I call deep curiosity. And, you know, D is to detach, which is to let go of your ABCs, um, assumptions, biases, and certainty. So if you can learn how to really challenge and interrupt those assumptions, biases, and not be so certain all the time. And, you know, I talk about this concept I learned about called living in the perhapsness, you know, admitting mm. that, you know, there is change, there is unknown, that there are things that we can be wrong about, just like Aristotle was wrong about, you know, <laughs> everything revolving around the earth, like even the most brilliant people can be wrong, you know, um, that, you know, that can really help us to access deep curiosity. That's D. I is intend, which is what's your mindset? going into, you know, curious conversations with your teen or with your partner? Are you actually thinking about the questions that you're going to be asking? Are you thinking about, um, you know, have you eaten? Have you slept well? Like, you know, what's your state of mind before you get into that question? And then what's the setting? You know, are you in a really noisy subway trying to get curious with your coworker? Or are you, you know, around a dinner table, you know, mm -hmm. um, in a safer environment where people feel like they can really be vulnerable and, and share and they feel psychologically safe? V is to value, which is something, you know, which is how do you see the dignity of the people you're being curious with, which includes mm -hmm. yourself. And this was especially important because right now we're in this crisis of dehumanization. We are literally dehumanizing people because they stand on a different geopolitical crisis stance than us, than a different political stance than us, um, or they have different identities than us. And, and we can't ever be curious towards someone if we think that they're animals or savages or less than mm. or unworthy. And so we have to start from this place of, I recognize your humanity. I recognize we both suffer <laughs> like that is a part of yeah, humanity yeah. and that is where we're going to open up deep curiosity. And the last is E dive E is embrace, which is how do you welcome the hard times in your life? Because it's during those moments of heartache, during those moments of grief, when you lose someone you love, 
um, even towards great, beautiful things in life, like getting married or having a, your chi- a child or children, mm-hmm. these can be hard moments of change. And that's especially when deep curiosity can, can bring you so much. It can help you to really get perspective from others who can help you on this, you know, important moment in your life, um, can help you to understand yourself, you know, better so that you can show up to those that you love. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that's E, embrace. So there's D-I-V-E, that's the dive motto. And there's all these different exercises that aren't just like, write a list of questions, you know? It's like, yeah. there, you know, there's all of these different practices that you can do to, you know, access deep curiosity.